India has a lot of coal reserves, but predominantly these coal reserves are of a lower quality with you know very high ash content and a low calorific value. I have a question here that you know what if we are using high quality coal like anthracite to prepare the carbon nanodots? What is the effect on their yield? Yeah, 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 uh, Krishna. This is a very interesting question, and I, I, I think I, I uh, told in the presentation that I also checked with some other uh, goals of the other countries, and you know, uh, uh, you know, I can say that uh, you know this low rank uh, coal, particularly the uh, bituminous and sub bituminous, they have you know uh, different, uh, you know, I can say the structures and comparison to anthracite, which is a high grade, which towards the graphitic carbon. I mean, the graphitic structure. And this uh, lowering coal, what I find is that this, uh, uh, they have consisting of a small, uh, you know, you know, you know uh, aromatic domains, which is, you know, very easy to exfoliate to, to prepare a aromatic uh, structures in comparison to the anthracite coal. And I found a less quantum yield in, in I tried to do two, three coals. I found that the quantum yield of those uh, higher rank coal is uh, quite uh, less than our, this lowering coal. So uh, it is because of the structural aspects and because of the uh, graphitization or the, because of the qualification processes. And I think because of that issue, you know, uh, uh, the people have not been revisited. You know, of course, there are few scientists or institutes they are working, you know, so that why that was a curiosity. Uh, that is why I'm telling the curiosity research and I'm very happy. I mean, the, I myself got happy that, you know, 37% People are curiosity, so that is it is required for a science. You know, we should be curious. That's that's only we have a, uh, in a, a very a good output. I can say this uh, quality output in the research. Thank you, Professor Sekia, uh, Doctor Sekia. Another question is that are functional groups necessary to obtain emissions from carbon quantum dots? The presence of functional uh, groups is it essential to obtain? Yes, uh, yes, it is uh, essential. You know, uh, there are two uh, ways, uh, you know, uh, wh in which we can make a different emission. And the functional groups are essential, as, as I told in the uh, uh, absorption spectroscopy and the emission spectroscopy, because of the presence of the carboxylic and hydroxyl group in the quantum dots derived from coal, this having the pi to pi star and n to pi star transitions, and from which we get a visible range emission spectroscopy. So, of course, the functional group are necessary, but you know, this is also, a, uh, you know, if uh, we, uh, you know, I think the questioner, you know, he knows it, or he or she knows it, but, you know, uh, size can also uh, make a uh, different emission. That is also possible. Okay. Uh, can we use these carbon uh, quantum dots as hydrogenous catalysts? Because, you know, you mentioned that these are soluble in water. Yeah, yeah. This can be utilized and uh, people are uh, using and uh, they got a good results. I have seen many good quality papers, uh, including in the SCS, they, they're using quantum dot as a hydrogen catalyst for uh, the organic uh, reactions. So it is possible. Uh, which type of ultrasonication path, you know, like a probe sonicator or like a ultrasonic path is preferential for the large scale conversion of coal to carbon dots? Uh, yeah, we have tried it both. You know, uh, first uh, I, I was trying with the Bath type, you know, bath type is better for a, uh, a large amount of uh, ultrasonic experiment. I uh, previously I was using the bath type, and the also the probe type also can be used. And if, uh, in my opinion, I will I would suggest using uh, you know bath type because large scale uh, production will be most you know uh, suitable or most uh, compatible uh, for putting the sample in the bath. But probe type is also can be done in a lab scale initially. Uh, so, in addition to XRD and Raman, is there any other characterization technique through which we can confirm the formation of activated carbon? Activated carbon, uh, the basic thing is the electron microscope. Now, this scanning electron microscope is one of the best, you know, first uh, to see the activated carbon, the porosity, and also the uh, beat is also the surface area uh, we can see. But uh, the first thing we should have a good electron microscope to okay. see whether their porosity is there or not. So Professor, now let's come to the next question. Like uh, you also mentioned that these uh, nanodots, they have ex uh, a potential application in agriculture. Uh, there is a question here that what was the, you know, the dosage when you went for the fertilizer applications? What was the dosage of the carbon nanodots when you went for the agricultural applications? Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good question. Uh, actually, initially we tried uh, by spraying the quantum dot solute water solution to the leaves. Mm -hmm. First, we tried with the spraying. You know, uh, maybe it's a very low concentration. So, you know, uh, you know, uh, five, one to ten milligram uh, per uh, ml. You know, I can say it is more uh, more diluted, and then more than diluted than one one ppm. I mean, uh, one milligram per ml. But initially we tried with spraying, and but later on we also tried with the putting with the soil to see whether the uh, uh, transmission to the root to the uh, to the plant stem. But uh, in case of like a stevia plants, you know the leaves are essential, so we tried with the spraying. So I think agricultural aspect the spray, you know, particularly most of the cultivators they spray. So spraying that is why we first actually they spraying with the leaves. So are, 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 the, are the carbon quantum dots you know, safe for use as a plant growth promoter? And if not, what can be some of their possible toxic reactions? Uh, uh, yeah, it is also, you know, very interesting question. You know, I have uh, seen last, uh, you know, two, three papers, you know, uh, what will happen? You know, carbon dot is biocompatible, carbon dot is non-toxic. But you know what will happen? Very interesting question. So is asking this. You know, after uh, applying so much of uh, carbon dot solution to you know, uh, suppose we are applying continuously applying, so there will be some deposition definitely. So there, those deposition has to be investigated. But you know, uh, uh, if in high end application like biomazing, where very very dilute uh, you know concentration applied, I think there will be no any issue. But you know, if we continuously applying, uh, suppose for cancer cell detection or cell biology study. So we are consuming a uh, those um, quantum dot. Then definitely there will be deposit. So those things has to be explored. And what I understand or what I found that those issues are the salience of carbon dot infusion research. So Dr. Seke, you also shared your insights about you know the work you did with the battery packs. One of yeah. the questions here is that what is the fate of the battery pack after usage? Because sustainability is a major concern. Yeah, yeah, actually, we, uh, I, you know, uh, this is actually, uh, we have done up to the uh, technology level. And, uh, you know, the battery rickshaw, the battery, the three wheelers I have shown, it is still running in our institute. So it is already, uh, I think, more than six months over. The sales are it is still running. But, you know, uh, the efficiency is issue, yes, you know, because coal based carbon, you know, active carbon may have some inorganics, you know, we try to make it less than 1% uh, inorganic uh, uh, content. So because of the inorganic, definitely there will be leakage current uh, issue or there will be some heating issue. And those are already present in lithium batteries. If you go to the lithium battery, those heating issue, this leakage current issue is there. So, but we try to compare or try to reduce as much as possible. But, you know, I can say that uh, we have been using till uh, more than six months of the dose battery pack uh, I have prepared. Uh, this is also a very similar question, and this is a, a wonderful question. Have you done, you know, uh, a comparison of the energy storage properties of coal-based carbon dots and then again other nanomaterials like carbon nanotubes or graphene and, you know, MXCs? Yeah, we have compared few of the nanomaterials, you know, these active cell carbon and uh, carbon nanotube and fullerene also we compared. But, uh, you know, uh, do not have get so, uh, so much good results. And the most the, uh, the, the, the uh, important factor is, you know, if we go for a magnum battery or supercapacity, we need a, a bulk of uh, uh, material. So, uh, but we uh, done we have done in lab scale we found that you know i can say at this moment that we do not have any good results i mean the encouraging results better than the active the carbon and similarly can we prepare you know three dimensional sp uh, spherical you know quantum uh, carbon quantum dots materials only three. like three dimensional spherical uh, unlike you know the two dimensional shields yeah, this is a also a curiosity. I mean, I think uh, quantum dot is a uh, 3D uh, that can be uh, had, that has to be no, you know, you know quantum dot dot is a separate. It, it is nothing but a crystals of nanocarbons. Quantum dot is a crystals of nanocarbons in a spherical shape, but it is not like a you know circular or something. So, uh, so three dimensional, I think. Then you have to go to the you know. Uh, diamonds uh, like so diamond 
and nano diamond could be a one of the substitute for that yes of course yes he, he or she is right that you know nano diamond could be three diamonds okay. so how do we identify you know carbon rich materials to come up with these type of you know end products uh, what are some of the necessary uh, studies that we need to take maybe a gcms or an hplc uh, for carbon based product uh, you know what i presented or what we are interested in is that the solid carbon like you know active carbon or the quantum dot or the uh, graphene you can say sometime but for uh, gcms and splc I think uh, that is not very essential if I understand uh, what he wants, uh, the questioner wants to know. CCMS and SPLC, particularly if he wants to do some fullerene, you know, fullerene research. So I think in fullerene, SPLC will uh, will take a, uh, will be useful for study the production. Okay. Uh, another question that's related to the battery packs. Uh, one of the attendees has asked the question that will this work for the African countries because, you know, there may not be a presence of a stable power source. You see, supercapacitor and battery, there is a difference. You know, uh, supercapacitor is, a uh, you know, if I can compare is that one is a 100 meter race and another is a marathon. You know, battery, you know, is a, uh, is a like a, a marathon race and super capacity is 100 meters. You know, quick search, quick desire. So super capacitor, you know, uh, I think uh, super capacitor uh, usually cannot replace battery. But what we are doing is that whole base super capacity that is seed and we integrate the lithium battery to make it an instant power. So I think the super capacitor will also work in any countries if he or he wants to use to give instant power in systems like, you know, uh, uh, like you know, electric vehicles. So a lot of a lot of things are there. Definitely, it will work. But thing is that the chemistry of the raw materials is uh, is very very essential. Whether to it forms you know a good quality carbon with a high surface area carbon. I don't know about the African country. I mean African coal. How their behavior, what is the rank or the geology? But I think it will definitely be work. So, Doctor Sakya, one final question. And since you are one of the leading experts in this field. And we are currently standing at a crossroad where we need to make a switch towards alternative energy sources. Would you, is there any recommendation or some thoughts would you would like to share with our attendees? Yeah, yeah, this is something that they would like to do. Yeah. Uh, you see the alternative uh, you know, energy sources or the uh, renewable uh, sources is a very, very essential for a country or for having or for getting a, a pollution free or environmental free or sustainable uh, art or sustainable country. I mean, the, uh, so this is very essential, but I will not say, you know, that the, the coal is a solution uh, in the, for the making the, uh, you know, the batteries or the super capacitor and the devices to in a, in a, in a major portion of the, um, uh, this uh, renewable energy. But what I mean to say, you know, uh, we have a lot of, our art is containing a very huge sort of vast resources, but what we are doing, uh, in my opinion, is that we have to revisit those things and we have to see whether those processes are actually sustainable, those processes are cleaner. So how to make it a cleaner, how to make it sustainable. So so this is the one of the major objective of our research. And what you are uh, asking me is that, is the, how to is it really possible for energy storage device or how to, what is the future of a, uh, you know, this uh, alternative energy. But, you know, uh, we have to see and I think the battery will be going to the next uh, level of, uh, you know, alternative energy. But the most important thing of a country, of a place is the raw material of the, of the making the battery. So these are the things, you know, so some countries uh, do not have those materials. So how to utilize or how to explore in a different way or in a, in a, in a, in a sustainable way can utilize and in, in another way, protecting the environment. So these are the two things. And I think in future, if I directly I answer the equation, I think the uh, low cost battery or the seed battery will change the world. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Sekia. This is a wonderful talk. Uh, with this, I'd like to turn over the session to Dr. Kunal Gupta. Thank you. Well, so thank you so much uh, to both of you, Professor Saikya, for the wonderful lecture and uh, Dr. Krishna Raghav for moderating the session so very well. 
Uh, as you might have seen, there is still a host of questions that are remaining, but it's always difficult to take all of the questions. So uh, I would like to first of all thank both of you. And this brings us to the end of today's session. Uh, there we hope that you have enjoyed this broadcast. We invite you to view the edited recordings from the past events in the AC Science Talks Library. At the end of the session, you will receive a brief survey, the link to which has already been placed in the chat. So we'll really want to uh, request you to kindly share your feedback with us so that we can continue to improve and serve you better. On behalf of all of us at ACS, thank you for joining us today. We hope to see you again soon for more ACS events. Until then, stay safe and healthy. Okay, thank you. Thank you again to uh, Kunal and Krishna and Aparna and the whole ACS team for giving the opportunity. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, Dr. Bye. Bye.